you might be wondering, what in the world is this contraption right here? And is it really all that necessary? Well, stay tuned. So, the DJI Osmo Pocket 3 has been out for about a year now. And if you're watching this video, chances are you saw the thumbnail and you're wondering what this crazy contraption is or you recently purchased the camera and now you're binge watching all the videos on YouTube or you're trying to decide if you really if you really should get this camera or wait for the newer for the next version which is going to be the Osmo Pocket 4 if DJI decides to release a newer version of this camera well if you are one of those people welcome to my channel so I'm going to start off the video by saying this camera is absolutely worth it so there's no doubt about it and I'm sure you guys have seen all the videos there's been nothing but this is basically the camera of the year it came out last year it was the camera of the year this year is still the camera of the year it's still the best camera that you can possibly buy so I have answered your question should you get this camera I think so now there is one main issue that people talk about when it comes to this camera and that is that it has three axis gimbal now what most people don't realize when it comes to the three axis gimbal is that so for example this is my main gimbal that I use for you know more like professional ish video this is what I put uh, my bigger camera and this is what I use now crazy look at the size difference massive but anyways so with three axis gimbal your video is gonna be stabilized on three axis but there is one more axis that is not uh, there is not stabilized that people are complaining about and I won't say like a ton of people it's more like the professional ish people that complain about that and that is the fourth axis which is the up and down so when you're walking forward right you have a tendency to just do this as you're walking now because this is a three axis gimbal because it has a gimbal a lot of people think that that part is going to be stabilized but in the video it's not stabilized and they see that bobbing up and down which is fine for you know vlogging on day-to-day -day life but when it comes to something professional like for example i do real estate if you want to do real estate videos you can't afford to have those up and down movement if you want your videos to look a bit more professional or in a situation where for example I shot a music video with this this past Saturday I shot a music video for somebody and I cannot afford to have an up and down movement so that is where this crazy contraption comes in because this camera is only a 3 axis gimbal and no it's not because this is pretty relatively cheap even something like this also only has three axis gimbal they are very it's very rare that you will see a gimbal that actually has a fourth axis gimbal now dji also has a gimbal uh, i think it's called ronin 4d which actually has a fourth axis gimbal but most in most cases it's only going to be three axis now this this right here is how i was able to get that fourth axis stabilization what i'm going to do is i'm going to go outside make a bunch of comparison videos showing you why this is necessary now i know i already know what a lot of people are gonna say most of you are gonna say this camera is designed for portability great and yes that's exactly what it's designed for and it's been helpful in that regards but i for what i do i need that fort access gimbal i mean fort access uh, stabilization in real estate I can't afford to have up and down videos I just can't you know so that's why this is necessary for me now also another thing people are gonna say is man you made it so much more complicated no I didn't to you it might seem like it but for me it's a necessity carrying this to a client's house looks a bit more professional than showing up with something like this also this is super light because it's so light one of the downsides is that you have more tendencies to actually shake more because it's so light. When I have something like this, this right here is already way heavier than this. And this doesn't even include my camera. So you can imagine I have a camera, I have a monitor, like this is heavy compared to this, even compared to this. With this clipped onto it, like this and with my cell phone for display 
this right here is still about two, uh, without my cell phone is 1.5 pounds. With my phone, I don't know what it would be, but it's still super light. It's so light that when I'm doing, when I'm trying to do a real estate video, I actually add something else to just give me a little more weight to it. That way I just feel more stable because it's so light. When you have something like this, you it's it's much much heavier but you feel just you feel a lot more stable with this because it's heavy so i do like the fact that i have this grip right here which you know you you extend this um how do you even you, oh you push it you extend this by pushing the button and it you know comes up and this right here helps me get better stability now i promise you don't knock it till you try it. And you're gonna see in the videos what the difference is having this versus not having that. So I'm gonna go outside. Well, I already went outside. So I'm gonna show you guys the video and then I'm gonna show you guys some of the crazy modifications that I did. For example, with the straps, uh, you know, just crazy stuff that I did to modify the Osmond Pocket 3 to make it easier for me to use and some of the accessories that I got and I'm gonna show you uh, where I got them from and stuff like that. Okay, to help you understand the benefit of this, I have mounted my Insta360 X4 onto this thing right here. And what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna run towards that building and give you guys a perspective from the X4. Then I'm gonna put the X4 down and I'm gonna do with this and without the stabilizer that way you guys can see the difference okay the first test is to walk fast towards that building i have active track on and i'm just gonna do my uh regular walk towards that building All right, now I'm gonna walk back. I have a little bit of a side to side shake, but that's fine. This is a long walk. Okay. So, that was a walk. Now the next thing I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna run. I mean, I'm not going to run too fast because at the end of the day, it has to be realistic. I might need to adjust the stabilizer just a bit more because I think it's lower than it should be because it's supposed to be 90 degrees. But uh, I think right there is good. All right. So now this one, I'm going to run to the building. Like I said, I'm going to run in something in a uh, realistic speed. Okay, running backwards. Yeah, it's definitely gonna be rough. Ain't no way this is gonna be smooth. I could be wrong, but yeah. So that was run forward and backwards. Okay, so I have now switched to just the Osmo Pocket. Using this grip right here, I have active track on. I have my X4 recording my movement. That way you guys can see so the first movement is gonna be just like the first one I'm gonna walk so something realistic ninja walk with active track all right now let's walk backwards then this actually looks really smooth especially when you use um, active track Maybe I'm gonna have to try this without active track because if you're just doing up and down, if you're just walking down the street, there is no active track to track something in most cases. So maybe the active traffic is gonna help with the up and down. But now let's run forward and backwards. Okay. 
this a little more shake I mean the video looks really stable damn okay I am kind of impressed all right now backwards okay well surprisingly at least from what I see here the video looks really stable now I'm not breathing hard I promise I just got done working out and I was also kind of holding my breath that way I don't shake as much I wanted to keep this as realistic as possible and I was also bending my knees now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove this little handheld thing and I'm just gonna hold the camera itself using one hand real quick if you like this video so far please like comment and subscribe help my channel grow I would truly appreciate that thank you now continue to the video all right so I have now attached the hand grip that way I can give this Osmo the best possible chance for stabilize for, for stabilization when using just a single uh, hand one of the benefits of having a bigger gimbal is that because it's heavy your body kind of compensates for that extra motion uh, whereas this Osmo is so light that it's easy to just move it around to get a lot more shakiness with your Osmo pocket but nevertheless I'm gonna show you the difference between uh, the stabilizer using the grip and the camera itself without any grip without any stabilizer so now let me go over there once again I'm gonna use active track just to make it as even as possible so now we're gonna track that building walking forward I like it's it's very stable from my video but you never know all right okay this is not bad I mean it looks very stable in my video so now time to run forward but obviously got to do the ninja walk this is for situations where you're trying to follow something fast that looks stable in my video one of the key things one of the most helpful things when trying to do this without any stabilizer is to kind of slow your breath so personally I will try and hold my breath if it's not a long shot because the more you breathe up and down the higher the camera goes up and down so now let's remove active track and see if there's a difference okay no active track now I'm gonna roll towards I'm gonna I'm tired of doing multiple tests so I'm just gonna run towards that building and show you guys I mean it looks really stable actually but obviously once I review the footage it's probably gonna be a lot more shakiness maybe I am very stable all right so now it's just handheld no grips and I'm gonna do the same thing with active track first so I'm gonna walk towards the building actually I'm gonna stop ninja walking that way you guys can see just how well this stabilizer no ninja walk straight on now let me go backwards and then I'm gonna run backwards okay this might be worse when you actually run okay just handheld again I'm gonna run this time around yeah it's a lot more shaking without it when you're doing single arm and run backwards yeah because it's a spring it's a lot more up and down when you run so you definitely be better off using the grip because with the grip it seems very stable but 
I wouldn't know until I go back to my computer and look at it. What I can tell you though, doing this for real estate, it absolutely matters when you have the up and down movement. And using the stabilizer and the grip definitely makes a difference when you're doing something like real estate where you want it to be level. Also, my gimbal mode is on tilt locked, so not follow. And everything is being recorded in automatic 4K30. First thing I want to do is I want to give you guys an up close look at this thing right here. So this is the stabilizer itself. This is a grip that I bought on uh, Amazon. I've had this grip for a long time. I used to use this on my gimbal. This part right here came with my uh, Ronin gimbal. So I didn't buy this separately, but it came with my gimbal. Uh, let me remove the... So the way I have it is using this screw right here to hold it. So yeah, this is it right here. This is the um, stabilizer. All right, so I was gonna wait till I got into the studio to actually show you a better look at this, but I figured I might as well just do it while I'm out here. So when not in use, the thing folds into the gimbal. I mean, the gimbal camera folds into the grip like this and it locks into place just like that. And if you want to remove it, you simply press this button right here and it comes out like a spring. Now, ideally, you want to have this at a 90 degree, uh, depending on what you're doing. I think that if you're walking, you want to have it right here. But if you're running, I think you'd actually be better off maybe a little bit lower. And if you have the wide angle lens as well, you're going to have to adjust it. But it's really easy to adjust you push this in and you move it up and down and when you push it in if you push it down as you can see it goes lower if you push it back up it goes back higher and you can select whatever range is good for you and also it matters if you're doing a ninja walk or not if you're doing a ninja walk then you can uh be a little less precise with this but if you're just walking regularly then you're gonna have to make the precision a little bit better and as far as the grip it's actually quite comfortable they give you this part right here that folds down and clicks in and that allows you for a more controlled uh, grip it gives you a, a fuller grip that way you have more stability but overall this thing I just absolutely love it uh, the part that allows you to connect this uh, this right here to the tripod is right here this all right here you just simply allow you to you know put it onto your hand grip or whatever and let me fold this back up so this is how you, once again this is how you store it now if you want to remove this you have to unscrew it just like that and to store this you can screw it back in or you can just put it right here but overall it's a well well thought out uh, stabilizer they also give you a strap that you can wrap around it to secure it uh, the downside is you don't have any spot to put like your wide angle lens and stuff like that but that's fine I really don't care but yeah overall very well thought out now speaking of external battery I actually bought this see I actually didn't buy the Osmo pocket 3 creator combo I bought mine separately because at the time I was purchasing a camera, the uh, Creator Combo was completely sold out. So I had to buy them separately. And another reason why I bought them separately was because I found that the DJI's wide angle lens isn't compatible with non DJI ND filters. So I didn't like that. So I went and bought mine separately. But yeah, I bought my microphone and camera separately and with that we're buying the uh we're not buying the osmo well, i mean we're not buying the creator combo i bought my battery separate so the company that actually makes this battery right here stark is the same company that makes this as well and they make a lot of stuff that i actually own but yeah 
I recommend you guys getting one of these. I actually have two of these and it fast charges your Osmo Pocket. So this is highly recommended. There's gonna be a link in description. So now onto this right here. If you have the Osmo Pocket, then you know that putting your camera into this, actually, if you put in your bag, the camera can easily fall out. So to combat that, what I did was, I put a rivet, I put a Velcro, and I use a rivet to hold it onto this right here. So now when I put the camera inside, I just wrap it around and it pretty much holds it and it does not go anywhere. The reason I really, I could have bought one of those cases that, you know, covers it entirely, but I didn't because I like that this allows me to store some of my use, my most useful lenses. For example, the wide angle lenses, I use the wide angle lenses a lot uh, for indoor shots or for like real estate where you need wide angle lens. I just pretty much use this. Now this one I actually got from a company called BRC or something like that. It's the company that actually makes these filters right here, uh, this ND filter. So it's, yeah, it's BRDRC. They make this wide angle lens. The reason why I went with them is because, so if you buy a wide angle lens, right, from DJI, or if you have the creator combo, and you try to put one of the ND filters, it will not be compatible. But by going with this company right here, I can easily put ND filters, and it stays on, and I can put this on my Osmo Pocket, and it's, no, it's not too heavy, and it perfectly works. If you have the DJI's wide angle lens, you're not gonna be able to put this ND filters on them. So that's why I went with them specifically. Now, I see some people that say that the wide angle lens has a lot of fisheye. Uh, that is true. However, it is very easy to correct in a video software. If you don't have a video software, then yes, that might be an issue if you're recording landscape. Wide angle lens in uh, portrait mode doesn't really show as much, but if you have a video editor, it's very, very easy to correct that distortion and no, it's not, it doesn't bring that display back to the same focal length. I mean, sec, same focal, yeah, same focal length as if you were just using the Osmo without wide angle lens. So there's a difference. And then here, I don't have the black missed but i do have a cpl uh, filter to remove glares and stuff like that when i'm recording things i don't want to be too shiny so these are my two most important filters now occasionally what i would do is i would switch these ones out with with like an nd16 that way if i forget the rest of these at least i have an nd16 ND16 is uh is per is like the is like the perfect one to have because if it's too bright then I just put the exposure to auto with ND16 on and if it's too dark then you know obviously I'll just remove it but it's like for the times that I typically go out ND16 would like would be the ideal one to put here because if you do forget this you at least have an ND in here now the third modification that i made is this part right here if you have the osmo pocket in it the sd card is like literally right there so in order for you to remove the sd card you have to remove the osmo pocket every time and it's annoying the only other way to retrieve your data is to turn it on and as you know well some of you may not know but the only way to turn it on is to remove the camera from this I don't want to have to do that all the time so i cut this little part out that way i can easily remove the sd card if you have the osmo pocket trust me this will make a lot of sense and if you don't have it just yet wait till you get it and you will see why this makes a lot of sense it's actually even more important to me than this right here this just holds it down but this right here really makes it easy for me to remove my micro sd card in and out so there's that. Now the third modification, actually, let me go back to this real quick. So if you try to buy this on Amazon, you would not be able to get it like this. 
the reason being is the so like I said for one I get this off my DJI gimbal but you can easily buy something like this off Amazon now this yes I did buy it off Amazon but I did modify it and the way I modify it is so this part right here screws out right so what I did was let me show you so what I did was I have one of these right here one of these things right here I bent it backwards like this you guys see it and I push it and I screw it into this part right here that way I can you know screw things into it and make it hold but but then this part I the reason why I bent this part is so it can fit through this right here just like that and now now like I said I've had this for a long time I never even thought that this would become ever become useful for me using it on with the Osmo pocket but I used to use this with my gimbal a lot and I have this right here which allows me to easily you know remove it uh, remove my pocket or stabilize it quick but reason I love this that DJI uh, gave me is I mean that they came with my gimbal is because I can tilt it to change the angle and I can rotate it but like I said you can easily find one of these on Amazon something like this and just do the same modification you know and put it on and your stabilizer or you know your gimbal will be right here now the third oh one more thing I really love this because it has a lot of like spaces I don't know what they're called but you can usually you can easily put a bunch of accessories for example I have this thing right here I can attach it just like this this part right here also came with my Osmo gimbal I mean with my DJI gimbal and this right here it gives me a hot shoe where I can put a LED I don't typically use the LED but it just gives me room to add something if I wanted to you know and it's very smooth so I really really love it you can also so typically I would just put it like this to stand right if I don't want to do this If I, if I don't want to just live it, when I have this this prior on it, then this is not going to be as stable. And also, when I'm walking around, like I was saying in the video earlier, I like to have a little more weight to it. That's where this tripod comes into play. This tripod easily goes into one of the holes. So I can use the thick one, which has the thick uh, hole. Or I can remove this and use a smaller one. So I like the fact that this already has it built in. That way I don't have to remove. I can just easily insert it. So let's say I want to put it into this right here. And just like that, I can easily balance this. And when I'm not putting it on the table, I just pull them down and it gives me a little more weight, which helps me stabilize my hand uh, out shooting. Now, like I said, I did go on Saturday, I did go shooting a music video for somebody. And I'll show you some cool trick that I did when I was out there. So... I use this right here. This is uh, Extra Beam Pro. The reason why I use this for my display is because it has a USB-C video output. And when I'm out in the sun shooting, it's really hard to see the display. So what I did was I connected my AR glasses wired to 
this end I mean to this end right here while I can see that way I can see my DJI Nemo app which gives me the preview of the camera man I am telling you this came in so so useful because the sun was so harsh I could not I, I had a hard time seeing the video clearly to ex, uh, to get a proper exposure so this really came in handy and I was able to put it right here and have the camera in gimbal on this side so there's that the third modification that I have is this right here so this is something that I had for many many years I used to have this on my GoPro and then I started using it with my Insta360 cameras but recently I modified it so that I can put my Osmo on here but at the same time I what I did was I screwed two magnets on the bottom of this that way I can stick this to any metal and man so each one of these metal right each one of these magnets I cut into Amazon suppose it can hold 20 pounds I have two of them so theoretically 40 pounds the Osmo pocket weighs less than a pound so yeah it's not a problem for this so when I put on a magnet it is very very strong it's so strong that I actually when I'm trying to remove it I usually just slide it because just pulling it is just it's just very very strong and then this spring right here is also very hard uh, I've been using this for years it's never falling so this is something that came in just super super useful I could have bought one on, Am on Amazon but why buy one when I can just modify mine so yeah those are some of the accessories that I use once again the ND filters uh, I got this specifically because they work with the wide angle lens that I use um, yeah everything is going to be linked in the description and now back to outside okay so while i'm out here i figured i might as well do active track you know vlogging style with the hand stabilizer and also do a evening view i mean i'm sure you guys seen a lot of videos you guys know that this camera is incredible in low light mode now i'm using automatic um everything is in automatic right now so this is not a D-Log game, this is not a manual ISO. I'm doing automatic because it's evening right now. It's 6 p.m. and the light is going to be going down fast. No ND filter, handy, uh, hand stabilizer with an active track. What do you guys think? Is this uh, good or not? Now, if I'm doing vlogging, I'm probably not going to be using hand stabilizer because pe when you're vlogging, people expect uh, a bunch of shaking in your videos now this camera right here is also great at stability but terrible at low light and i'm sure based on the previous test that you guys have seen just me walking up and down uh i was recording 5.7k i can't record in 5.7k plus or 8k because this camera in low light is just not great especially when you're a darker uh skin tone person like me but anyways this has been my outdoor this has concluded my outdoor test with the Osmo Pocket 3. This camera is incredible. If you're still thinking about getting this camera, you should absolutely get it. Uh, you should not wait for the Osmo Pocket 5. The reason why you should not wait for the Osmo Pocket 5 is because if you look at uh, DJI's typical timeline releases of their Osmo Pockets, it's about every two to three years the first one comes out and then two years later the second one comes out and then two years later two or three years later this the third one which is where we are right now comes out and this camera came out last year so when will the next Osmo Pocket 4 come out I mean is this Pocket 3 or Pocket 4 when will the next I don't know I lost track but when will the next Osmo Pocket come out the earliest it's gonna come out is probably gonna be late 2025 or maybe 2026. This camera is selling out like hotcakes. Even till now, you're gonna have a hard time finding it uh, on sale. The crazy thing about this camera is, on the used market, is almost is basically just as, I mean, it's almost the same price as it is brand new. If you don't look, if you don't believe me, go on eBay, type in Osmo Pocket Three or Four. 
damn, I, I lost count. But type in Osmo Pocket 3 on eBay. It is basically the same price as you will find it brand new on Amazon. I am blown away. I've never seen any camera that on used market is almost as expensive as it is brand new. This camera is crazy. And another reason why you shouldn't wait for the newer for the next version is when the next version comes out, which is going to be a while, you can capture incredible moment in the meantime and when that time comes for you to upgrade you can sell this one and basically get a new one i mean you can sell it for maybe a bit cheaper than what you would what you pay for a brand new but in the meantime you would have captured so many incredible moments this is not just a photographer this is not just for vlogging this is uh, an incredible camera for just about anything you want to do if you enjoyed this video, please hit the like and subscribe if you haven't subscribed. I appreciate you guys watching. If you want to pick one up, go on Amazon, uh, buy the Creator Combo. If you don't want to buy the Creator Combo because you already have a mic or wide-angle lens, just buy the regular uh, Osmo Pocket and buy the, uh, you know, the extra battery. The extra battery is great. It gives you an extra grip, extends your battery. But if you don't want to buy the uh, extra battery, man, the camera, the, the battery life on the pocket is great. I shot a music video almost the whole day with that, with just the Osmo Pocket. And it charges really, really fast. But anyways, catch you guys in the next one. I appreciate you guys watching. Peace.